Okay, all right, so today we're going to extract this DNA from peas. Now you can do this with anything. You can do it with bananas, as long as somebody in the department doesn't have an allergy to bananas. Or you can do it with onions, kiwi, okay? But today we're going to use peas. Everything's got DNA, okay? You've got DNA, plants have got DNA. Peas are just particularly good because they're squidgy. If you do it with something hard, it makes it harder to do. So the first step, very easy, we're just going to take a small scoop of peas. They are a little bit frozen, but don't worry, they'll soon mulch up. Okay, just a small amount, about that amount. Okay, and then we're going to take a mortar and pestle because we want to basically get it to the consistency of baby food. We want to really mulch it up. So what we're doing there is just breaking up the cells. Okay, so we're going to have all the cells separated. And we've actually got in, get, get into the cells there after that. So I'm going to pour my peas into here. I think that should probably be enough. And now I'm going to take my wonderful cocktail that I prepared here. Now this is green. It's washing up liquid, so a detergent. It's salt and water. So there's 300 milliliters in here. That's 30 milliliters of washing up liquid, 270 milliliters of water, and 12 grams of salt. Okay. And what this is going to do, well, if you got this in your eyes, what would it do? Get washing up liquid in your eyes, what's it gonna do? Sting. sting. This would sting a lot because it's gonna basically break open the cells. It's gonna damage the cells, okay? So it's gonna break open the cells to allow us to get inside the cells to get the DNA. So we take 10 milliliters of this, just roughly. Use a measuring cylinder. And we're gonna pour that into our pea peas, and we're going to make pea soup. Not very tasty pea soup, mind you. We're going to grind it up. We want to get to the basic consistency of baby food. Okay. So when using a mortar and pestle, don't just kind of stir it. You kind of like push it against the sides and grind it down. Okay. And you want to basically just keep going until everything has gone pea green. So the mortar and pestle is breaking part of the peas to separate out the cells and then the cells are being burst because of the detergent and the salt which are allowing the nucleus and the DNA to be separated from the cells. It shouldn't take long because they're quite soft. If you do it with um, anything hard like onion, you'd have to use a liquidizer for this, but because peas are soft, you can do it very easily. And we have a wonderful pea, salt, and washing up liquid velute. Tasty. Maybe not. Okay, I'm gonna take that and we're going to put that into a small beaker. Now, to give it time for all of the cells to be broken open, we're gonna incubate this. It's gonna get a bit messy, so make sure you wash up as you go along. We're gonna incubate this at 60 degrees, okay, for 10 minutes. <coughs> so we're gonna go over to our water bath Okay, so we're going to place this at 60 degrees. It's going to go in there for 10 minutes. And be careful because it's a water bath at 60 degrees, so it's a burn hazard. Okay, and we'll leave that for 60 degrees. Make sure you know which one's yours. Okay, and then we'll come back and collect them. All right, so after you've taken your peas out of the water bath, where they've had time for the uh, cells to split apart with the salt and the washing up liquid detergent solution. The detergent, by the way, breaks down the cell membranes because if you add a detergent to grease, like grease from a fry up, then it allows it to mix the water. So you're allowing the cell membrane to mix with the, uh, the water part of the solution. We're gonna put it into an ice bath because we're gonna try and bring the temperature down ready for the next part where we're gonna filter it and try and precipitate the DNA. So just take a few ice cubes, put it into a beaker and add uh, some water and just rest it in there for about five minutes. So after about five minutes, we need to take that and we need to get a filtrate from it. So just take a piece of filter paper and a filter funnel. 
and we're going to need a boiling tube as well. We'll just get a boiling tube. Okay, and we are going to take the filter paper and fold it up. Now it might take quite a while to filter because it's quite thick. You don't need too much filtrate, probably only about two centimeters deep. Okay, I'm just going to pour in my cord solution into here. It's quite squidgy. And it might take a little while to drip filter through. All right, so it's come out a bit thick to filter through normally. You can use a J cloth, like a washing up cloth instead of filter paper that helps to squeeze it out. But what you can do is you can just fold the filter paper and just manually compress it, squeeze it to squeeze out the uh, solute, okay, so the, the solution from uh, the peas here. Okay, so we've reached the final step. We've got our pea solution here, okay, which now only contains hopefully what's in the cell. We've filtered, not that brilliantly, but we've filtered out most of the bigger pieces. And now we're going to try and create a situation where the DNA is going to separate from everything else. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little tiny bit of pineapple juice. Okay, now pineapple juice contains an enzyme which naturally breaks down um, proteins. And the DNA is wrapped around these proteins called histones, which keep it all coiled up. Remember, each cell contains two meters of DNA, so it's like wrapping cotton around a reel. In this case, the, the protease is going to break that down. So we're going to take a couple of drops of that. Best use a pipette uh, to do that. Okay, so we can use a dropping pipette to take just a couple of drops of that. Give it a couple of minutes. Shouldn't take very long. And then we're going to actually start the process of extracting the DNA. Now to do that, we're going to use a technique where we're going to take some ethanol, which has been ice cold, ice cooled. It's actually really good to use um, purple methylated spirits because you get this lovely mix of green and purple, but we just got clear ethanol. And we're going to add it very slowly to here. Not so it mixes, so it forms a layer over the top. Okay, so we're going to run it down the side of the tube. Now that will create an interface between the two liquids, one that's more polar than the other. And the DNA okay, will accumulate at the interface between the, uh, the water phase and the ethanol phase. So I'm going to take some ethanol and I'm just going to slowly dribble it down. You only need a couple of mils. Just be very slow about it because it's basically going to form a layer. It's going to be like some sort of cocktail where you've got one layer a different colour than the other. You can always see there it's nice separate layers. I'll add a bit more. between the two. Okay. Now, all we have to do now is leave that for a little while. And then what's going to start to happen is you'll start getting this kind of snotty, kind of white mucusy type of stuff occurring between the two layers, which is mostly DNA, some other things. Okay, it's not a, a very pure method this of doing it. Okay, but mostly DNA. And then once we've done that, we can use a glass rod or if you've got one at hand, you can use things like little knitty needles or something, and you can hook out that DNA and wrap it around the glass rod and actually see that there. So, going to have a go at this, let's see if it's done enough yet. 
if you leave it for a couple of minutes you'll probably get a better result. Okay, so we've left it for a couple of minutes and what we've got here now is a very clear interface between the two and some white material here. We've also got a couple of others. This one's really good. And now you can see we're getting this white kind of snotty material that's just forming at the interface between the two layers. Now, you can use various things to hook it up. I'm going to try using a splint. But the best thing to use are bacterial uh, inoculation loops, which are quite good for hooking it up. I'm just going to put it in very slowly so I don't inter interfere with it too much. And I can just hook some of it out. Now, if you've done it really well, you can hook out quite a lot. I think mine could do leaving for a little bit longer. Let's try another one. Got this one here. The longer you leave it for, the easier it is to get out. And you can actually even twist out long strings of it. And there we go. And more or less, with a few impurities, that is DNA. Okay.